Hi everybody, I got a lot of requests to do a tutorial about my rendering process, so this is what I will show you in this video. I used to do my renderings directly in ZBrush, but it didn't give me the results that I was looking for, so I switched to Maya and Arnold a while ago. You can use the techniques in any ray tracing renderer that you want though, but in my case I'm using Maya 2018 uh, with Arnold 5.2.2.1. I think there are newer versions out there already, but uh, this works for me. For the scaling in my scene, I'm using centimeters, uh, since I'm used to that. So my working unit is set to centimeters. This will be important later. So let's get started. I just drag and drop my file that I exported from ZBrush into the canvas. When I'm working with multiple objects in my scene, I like to group them together with Ctrl G and let's scale it up to a proper size so for that i like to use a primitive as a reference and with shift right click i can open up this menu and you can use whatever primitive you want i'm just using it as a guide and i'm moving it up in the y-axis to something like 27 centimeters and since my working unit is set to centimeters this is the equivalent to it so with that in place i take my head and scale it up to around the height of the primitive let's scale it up a little bit more something like that and now i know that it has like real life proportions let's assign some shaders to it so i select the head first and assign a new material and under arnold i'm using the ai standard surface and let's call it matte skin and I'm assigning the same type of shader to each of the objects in the scene. So for this one I'm calling it matte teeth and for the eyes I'm doing the same. So Arnold AI standard surface and call it matte eye. So once we have that in place, I like to create a camera since I want to have a nice view that I render the shot from. And with the camera still selected, I can go to panels and look through selected. And then I can easily position the camera to an angle that I find pleasing. And to get the resolution, the framing of the, the shot right, uh, you can hit this button on top here. And this will give you like the outline of the frame and let's position it to a her heroic shot like this this seems about right and i like to lock the attributes of the camera once i'm satisfied with the with the position so don't mess it up accidentally and let's jump back into the perspective view and create a light so i'm going to arnold and lights and as a base i like to use the physical sky to get an even ambient light so with the ai sky dome selected i go into the ai physical sky tab over here and disable the sun since i want to add the main light sources manually and to make it a bit more subtle again i like to decrease the intensity of the ambient light to 0 0.3 let's see what we have so far i go to the open arnold render view and hit render and see what we got so far this is looking not too bad but i don't like to have the sky in, in my render as well so i'm selecting the the light and under the shape node there's a camera attribute and we can dial it down to zero this way we don't see any of the physical sky in the render so let's create the main light source and for that i like to use the area lights and the same thing that we did with the camera um, i like to select the area light go to panels and look through selected and this way i can easily position the light where i want it to be and i want to have like a top down three quarter light source um, to, to hit one side of the face but I want to hit a little bit of the other side of the cheek as well so I position it roughly around here and 
what's important for the area lights is the size since this will determine the, the sharpness of the shadows and I want to have them a bit softer so I'm scaling it up a little bit something like that and for the rim light I'm just duplicating the, the light with Control D and with the new light selected I go to panels again look through selected and position the light behind the behind the object to give it a, a nice rim light. So I go back into the perspective view and since I want to have like a, a nice rim light around the whole silhouette of the of the model I'm scaling it up quite a bit something like this so it covers the, the whole silhouette. So let's see what we have so far. If you don't have the camera view visible but like the perspective view you can change it uh, here in the in this slider. So I want to make sure that I have my camera as my rendered view. And as you can see, not much has changed and that's because the intensity of the light is way too, too low. And there are two settings that we focus on right now. And that is the exposure and the intensity. And what I like to do is set my exposure to 10 and only adjust the intensity later on. So for the intensity I like to go with something like 8 and it really depends on the distance of, of the light as well. So if you get closer with the light it gets more intense of course. Um, but yeah, like I said, when it comes to the settings I recommend to test out different ones. For example, the distance of the light to the object, the intensity, the light temperature and so on. But for the purpose of this tutorial I will stick what usually works for me. So with the main light source uh, set, I go into the rim light and do the same thing. So exposure set to 10 and intensity set to 8. As you can see, the light here is not covering the whole, the whole head. So I'm scaling it up a little bit more, something like that. And this way I have a nice rim light that goes around the, the edge of the, of the model. So with the lights in place, let's adjust the shaders to get the results that we want. So I'm selecting the head and go to material skin. And since we want to have the subsurface scattering effects, I set the base weight to zero. So we are not using any diffuse shader, but more of the subsurface shader. For the roughness, you can see it's really glossy right now. So I want to Go to the specular roughness and increase the roughness a little bit to something like 0.5 and the the roughness of the specular is really dependent on the surface that you have so if you have like really fine skin pores and wrinkles and stuff that breaks up the surface uh, you might want to have a sharper specular since the the details themselves will break up the surface but since I have a really flat skin with no details at all, I keep it a bit more rough to have like a more diffuse uh, specular highlight, as you can see here. I really like that result here, so I will leave it at 0.5. And now to the subsurface shader, I'm setting the weight to 1 and the type to random walk. This is a more accurate type of subsurface scattering. For the color, um, let's just take a bluish gray, just for fun, um, really light. But if you have a texture map painted, uh, this would be the slot where you sh would input the, the map into. So let's go to the radius. This is really important because the color determines the, the color of the subsurface scattering effect. And since I want to have a reddish subsurface scattering effect, I want to have a reddish color in here as well. And to make it a bit easier for me, I go to the RGB options in here. These sliders will determine what color will get reflected the most. So I want red to be reflected a lot, green not as much, and blue the least. So I have something like this. This is kind of the typical color for, for a bloodish subsurface scattering effect. And I will end up with a orangey dark red. So with this in place, you can see the subsurface scattering effect is far too strong. And this is because of the scale. 
since the subsurface scattering effect is related to the size of the object. So if you have a smaller object in your scene with the same settings, the effect will appear much stronger than if you scale it up. So uh, keep that in mind. And since this is way too strong right now, let's uh, put in like 0.2 and it may even be still a little bit too too prominent so i dial it down to something like 0.12 let's see how it looks i think i would even make it a bit stronger again so 0.15 and yeah that looks good to me and what you can do now is to play around with the shaders for for example for the teeth add a subsurface shader as well and make it a, a beige kind of color to give it like dirty yellowish teeth but for the sake of the length of the video i'm keeping it short right now and i'm really happy with the results so far so it's still really noisy so let's crank up the samples a bit and what I like to do is to set the samples of each light to at least four to get less noise in the shadows. So I'm increasing every light. And for the overall render settings, I go to the render settings up here. And under common, I go down to image size and select the full HD resolution. Under Arnold Renderer, I like to set the camera anti aliasing samples to 5. And since we're mainly using the subsurface shader, um, we only have to increase the subsurface scattering samples here. And let's put it to 4 and hit render again. And this is the final result. I would recommend to take a little bit more time to set up the, the lights and the, the shaders to play around with them but I think this is a decent clay render for, for my models and for yours maybe as well. So I hope this was helpful and if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below. Uh, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.